Hello and welcome back to Rogue Trader. We have finally arrived at Footfall. Yet, it is not time to go to Footfall as we have other things on our mind. I'm just trying to move to somewhere where it doesn't have banners blocking us. So, uh, let's start with our colony development. Let's check that we're as far through that as we need to be. No. So we just finished praising the muses. So now we can do the one in Foulstone that requires praising the muses, which is a... 10 complacency place, so you know what? That means it's back to the uh, map in order to then get that done. That will then allow us to get complacency in Dargonus, which will then allow us to do Dargonus's one. So, in here, we're now going to take... Which one is it? Uh, Holy Defenders. I need nine people. Okay, so I need more people to do this one. So I need to take people from somewhere else. So which one has people? Do you have people? Is that shelter? With people? Shelter? Is generating us 18 people. So when Shelter finishes, we can do that. Wonderful. So that means that we are now finished with colony management for now because we simply cannot progress until we have everything that we need. Okay. Cool. That's good. We have one more person, I believe, who wants to speak with us before we can actually land in Footfall and start the chapter. So let's see if we can find that person. So I believe it's Nomos, but let's see if we've got anyone else who needs to speak with us. Visit Dargonus. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Accompany Jai to Footfall. Okay, we'll get to that. Okay, right. In which case, we want to do this. Also, I just realized we could actually grab people another way. Let's uh, have a look at that first. Because we have contracts. I completely forgot about the contracts, which allows us to swap resource for resource. Can I swap something for people? Yes, I can swap Plasteel for people. Of course I'm going to swap Plasteel for people. That's... Wait, no. Expenses, profit. Yes, that's right. Swap plasteel for people. I now have 10 people. Okay, now I can do it. <laughs> so now back to the map. I forgot that we had those. So now we can go back in here. Then we can finish the one in Falstone. That then gets us complacency, which allows us to start the one in Dargonus. It's all connected now. So now I should be able to grab Holy Defenders. So this is going to get us some armor, which looks incredible. But it's also going to get us complacency plus four for all colonies. This is the only way that we're going to be able to raise Dargonus's complacency. So I'll put it to six. Now we need one more complacency. And there was something that gave us one more, right? Uh, Pleasing the Tired gives us four more. Okay, I guess that, that was our one. Yeah. So we need to take Pleasing the Tired. It's going to cost us Prometheum, which we have. Provisions, which we have. Uh, Adamantine, which we have. And Phlogiston, which we have. Wonderful. Let's do this then. Okay, then Foulstone, we are going to complete Holy Defenders. That gets us a uh, 5 profit factor and the armor. And a different uh, ending than Reliquary, I assume. The monastery damaged by the Crucible will be rebuilt. Meanwhile, the monks will begin the process of acknowledging the kinship of St. Cognatius with the Von Valantius line. Execute. This is now completed. We once again completed this. Weirdly, that gave us an achievement update, which means that I think the achievement's been made a little bit weirdly. I think the achievement update is like, oh, you've completed it on another colony, but I think it only counts that you've done it on X number of colonies, not which colonies it was. It doesn't expect you to reload the game and do it again, which, of course, we have done. Right, here we go. Uh, no, this is exactly the same as Reliquary. We've done this. Oh, perfect. Okay. What do we know about St. Cognatius reincarnate? He's the same person. I want the opinion of my advisors. And then I can choose whichever one I chose before. Which I think was... This one, which gave us the hammer. Yeah. And then this loses us to efficiency, but we're okay with that. Why do I have 33 people? What happened? How did I end up with 33 people? Anyway, um, that's fine. Yeah, and the plus 15 to all skills. Yeah, yeah. That's the one we chose. Wonderful. How did I end up with 33 people? All colonies gain complacency. That must be it. Complacency increases, affects the amount of profit factor produced and the speed of projects in the colonies. Did Holy Defenders do something else? Did I miss it? No. Nope. So, why do I have 32 people? I... 
I got something else in the anus as well. Okay. But yeah, why? how did I end up with so many... It doesn't matter. Uh, your Lordship, a monstrous storm has broken out on Yanis. The apocalyptic anomalies are tearing our agri-world apart, and their epicenter is in the desecrated sector. Something must be done before this whole colony is destroyed. We have to find the source of this madness. Okay. I can use an awareness check, a very difficult one to have them find the source, but let's ask some questions. Calm down and report ex what exactly is happening there. The fires in the sky that crash on the ground and turn everything around them to ice, the moaning earth, the deadly sound careening through the cities, the purple glow in the sky, the furious storm has covered half the continent, but we can see its epicenter from the orbit, the ruins of a Xena structure complex. What we thought to be the debris of buildings turned out to be a machine. Now it rises from its sleep, shining the blue and purple lights from the spheres melded onto it. The deadly spirits have become more material and now everyone can see that they are not dancing, they are fighting. Fighting and chanting two names, Halcyon and, Kes and Kese. What do we know about this cataclysm? The leader of the Inquisition Squad, Lady Zhu, did not grace us with a full report since she has been hastily preparing for the expedition into the heart of the anomaly, but she mysteriously claims that we have become the witnesses of an ancient clash between Xenos, and in spite of our unfamiliarity with their conflict, it is important to choose our ally in this struggle wisely, whatever that means. All the wretches in custody have instantaneously gone mad. We cannot pull a modicum of information from them, even though we have a sense that they understand what is happening much better than we do. So we can do a lore Imperium check to do this, or we can send our best enforcers in there. So we can send Lady Zoo in with an Imperium, or send enforcers in. I don't know if we want to send her in there. By asking the questions, it's unlock the option. And unlocking the option, I suspect is good. I suspect that's because we previously did the um, the option to allow the Inquisition to stay. So potentially this is continuing on and that's why we've got a good thing here. You know what? I am going to do it because we allowed the Inquisition to stay. We should let them carry on because it's probably going to be a bigger benefit. Because this is basically the payoff, right? Like, this is the generic event, which you get as, like, your backup. This is if you've got rid of the Inquisition, you have nothing else working for you. This is, actually, I have the Inquisition here, I can use Lore Imperium to get a bonus. Let's do it. The Escort Squad reports that the people of Lady Zoo demonstrate incredible skill investigating the anomalies and advancing towards the epicenter. Our people have reached the Xenos ruins that once served as either a palace or a gargantuan machine. They have encountered an extremely high concentration of spirits. It appears the spirits are fighting among themselves with two particularly vivid ghostly figures among them. One of these prominent spirits radiates blue light and seems to be clad in Aldari armor. The other is engulfed in purple flames and clad in a Xenos ceremonial raiment. They utter sounds reminiscent of Aldari speech, but any attempts to translate them have proved unsuccessful thus far. It is an old dialect from a time before the fall. Order your warriors to aid the spirit wreathed in blue. It fights for Lilithan purity against the despicable sorcery. Even an echo of the spirit's voice is enough to understand that its cause is just. I can teach your people how to explain to the blue spirits that they are not their enemy. So strange it is to hear the words of our ancestors who witnessed the apex of our glory. I find myself rather enjoying the words of the spirit clad in purple. That one is a master of delights, a commanding prince of wisdom, so much more compelling than the pompous blue-flamed fool. Have your servant support the purple sheathed one, and I will tell them the right words to stop the purple phantoms from slaughtering them. 
What does it matter what these spirits are babbling about? They must both be slain. Advatar, turn your warriors. Turn to your warriors and inspire them to fight for their home to the very last. They have already made sacrifices to get this far. So remind them of what those sacrifices were for. Lady Zhu intends to fight both sides of the spirit conflict, but your soldiers are waiting for you to confirm her orders. Um, okay. Hmm. Let's see. Um, I think blue spirits. Early at, make sure that the men know the right words. The scouts attack, destroying the purple spirits one after another. The blue phantoms recognized the new allies and did not harm them. Once the battle was over, the dignified spirit swathed in blue flames reached out to the scouts' thoughts, granting them visions. The planet, which was inhabited by Aldari prior to the fall, at some point became one of the many theatres of war between the sensual excess, the dogma that reigned over the Xenos at that time, and the aesthetic self-restraint. A local ruler, Kesai, was enlightened and wise, yet susceptible to depravity. In his desire to transfer his soul to another form of existence, he created a mechanism that would let him take over the bodies and minds of all his people. One of the ruler's bodyguards named Halcyon rose against the tyrant and mortally wounded him, but could not stop him from merging with the machine. Halcyon then gave his life to bind his own spirit to the device and continue fighting therein. This tragic conflict marked the end of all Aldari on the planet, but preserved an echo of their souls and those of their leaders. We got Lilithan's Fury. This is a one-handed melee weapon. Whenever the wielder deals damage to the, tar to the target with Lilithan's Fury, the target becomes blinded until the end of combat. The first attack with Lilithan's Fury in a round against the blinded target does not set the attack on cooldown. Ooh, nice. Then the spirits disappeared. But for how long? The bodies of the fallen and a strange relic discovered amidst the ruins were the only proof that, for a single day, Yanis was once more engulfed in a war between long fallen Xenos. And that was shelter, and that got us 18 people. So that explains a lot of our people, and then we had a multiplier on, on Janus, right, of, with efficiency. Now that makes sense, it just, we hadn't got the thing saying shelter had been completed yet, which means that I didn't know it had been completed. Also, interestingly, it seemed to get completed when we did a Foulstone thing, but that must be because time moved forward when we did the Foulstone thing, which then caused that to complete, which now means we have lots and lots and lots of people. Wonderful. So that was shelter, so that's the final one there. So in theory, we can just start building there. Okay, that's fine. Here, we're building Pleasing the Tired. So Pleasing the Tired is the one that's going to get us the extra... Um, complacency and that's going to put you up to the complacency that you need so I don't really want to mess with things until you're at the complacency that you need then I can build bastion at that point we do not care right because that's complacency security efficiency you don't need any of those you don't need any of those you don't need any of those we're just going to do a quick check of everything I'm just scrolling down the requirements each time we see one okay nothing here um, again, we have everything currently. I just want to check that we do not have any other conditions. So no conditions there either. Wonderful. Available 6. Do we have any conditions that are based upon uh, complacency? Nope. Uh, nope. 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 Wonderful. Kiava Gamma. Do we have any that are based upon complacency? Or, you know, efficiency or any of this sort of stuff. No. So, once we've got that, we should be absolutely fine to continue. You've got things that give you efficiency, which is nice. And in fact, we really want those. But you haven't got any that require efficient... Um, yeah, that require these things, efficiency. Cool. So, once we start going, this finishes, we'll be all good. But we have to wait for it to finish. Nice. Okay. Quick save. We have now got to the end of the colony development section of the start of today's episode. There are a lot of things that we're going to have to do with colony development, but luckily once we do this last one, we can pretty much just do it as we want because it doesn't matter, right? Because we know we can do all the projects we want to do, you know, 
as long as we have the requirements, we can do it. Um, I'm also not going to do any of the contracts right now. I know we could, but I'm going to leave all of these ones in case we need the uh, the resource or we need to redistribute resources. I think that this is going to be very good for us. Like, for instance, this gives us five Prometheum for seven provisions. That could very much be required for us at some point. Right. Quick save. I don't know why I felt the need to quick save again, but, you know, I have a habit. I was going to say it's a bad habit, but it's probably a very good habit. Right. Hello. The massive figure of the Malatech Asepleus is frozen before a cogitator in a praying pose. Without raising his head, he addresses you. I salute the ruler of this ship. I see you found your great spirit, Asclepius. I have found a miracle and the end of my worldly road. I have never seen and never will see anything more meaningful than the spirit of Nomos. In the face of its multitude, we are nothing but the fixed values of an erroneous function. See ya. The cyber gargoyle's gaze tracks you as you walk away from the cogitator. Talk to Nomos. Okay. Um, let's ask him about the incident. Nomos, remember, you brought us data sustenance. We recognize the name, recognize the place where Nomos originate. Okay, I think this was slightly different. Nomos suddenly falls silent. Symbols race chaotically against the screens of the huge cogitator, and you hear an almost human groan come from the depths of the machine. Nomos, understand, realize, comprehend themselves. For a moment there is silence, broken only by the moans of the huge machine, and then the cyber gargoyle begins to speak, and with it the other servitors chosen by Nomos. We have analyzed the data with which you have sated us, and we have recreated the sequence of events. First, there was Epitaph. It is a world, but it is merely a case, a container, for something we cannot name and cannot understand. The Adora and the ship have been to that place. Something was listed, lifted up from that world. A gift. A trusted priest in Crimson, one who identified himself as Amarnat, comprehended the gift raised from Epitaph, and from it he created what the databanks list as a tech blight. But that is not how Nomos came into being. We were not invented. We were not freed. We came into being by accident. The chorus of servitors sounds genuinely confused and almost desperate. Theodora's ambition... The myriad mechanisms of the huge ship, Amarnat's mind, the inquisitive attempts to comprehend and extract, the dormant blight, the dormant epitaph, what lies hidden in its depths, and between it all, we slipped in, connected, and emerged like an electrical discharge between the poles. Accident, incident, that is what we are. We have no purpose, no history, no most, just are. Okay, so... I've lost the details slightly, but what's interesting to me is that they're describing this as a blight, a blight, a plague, you know, kind of a plague, something of that nature. That reminds me very much that she's not standing there. Uh, it would have helped if she was. That reminds me very much of Earliette talking about or what her people told her about Kruderak. Now, I'm not saying that they're connected. All I'm saying is that uh, Amarnat was at something called Epitaph. He found a tech, or he created a tech blight, and now uh, Nomos exists. Could it be that Amarnat was tied in to Kruderak being destroyed? That would start to link us towards something towards the end of the game. Like, could it be that what we're going to find out is that Nomos was created by something that Amarnat did? with Kruderak, kind of combining um, combining Imperial tech with uh, Aldari tech somehow. It's just a thought. I don't know if it's true, but it's just a thought. Do you know where this epitaph is? That data is gone. Discovered the truth about Nomos? Oh, okay. Uh, deleted, erased, deliberately, but we cannot trace who did it or why. A tech uh, blight? A gift, a terrible one. You would call it a weapon. Theodora coveted it. 
She needed it desperately, but we do not know why. How is Amor Nass involved in this? He desired knowledge. Theodora allowed him to explore the gifts of Epitaph sleeking his thirst. We know it did not bring him happiness. In the footprints of his sleeked thirst, fear followed. The blessed Amarnat was involved in the birth of the spirit named Nomos. I do not believe for a moment he could have been frightened by this miracle. It was not us he feared. He did not know us, but only suspected. His mental processes were occupied by the tech plight. That is what he feared. He wanted protection from it. Okay. Uh, the ship was on Epitaph. Amarnat travelled aboard it, investigating the tech blight, and Nomos was born as a result of an incident. So how is it possible that no one in the crew knew the whole truth? The truth was hidden. Deliberately. Your officer's memories were stolen. All the cogitator's memory banks were wiped. It took you feeding us the truth bit by bit for us to piece it together and understand. Who has the resources, the knowledge, and the power to accomplish such a feat? It would have been beyond the capabilities of the Blessed Amrnat himself, and he would never destroy knowledge. This story disturbs me. It sounds like an echo of the sacrilege whose name is the pre preservation of ignorance. The spirit of Nomos must be protected from the encroachments of that power that tried to conceal the truth of its birth. Okay. Also, it brings me the thought of, does Kunrad know about what happened? Or was his memory also destroyed? Because he would have been on the ship at the time. Hmm. Enough about the past. Let's talk about the future. You do, in fact, have a purpose, Nomos. Tell us, then. What is our purpose? Okay. So. One is clearly dogmatic. Three is clearly heretical. I think. So I think two is the iconoclast one. Now, I don't know if you're going to get points for it, but that seems to be the path. To simply live comprehending yourself in the world, life does not need a purpose to justify itself. To simply live. The chorus of servitors dutifully repeats your words, but seemingly without understanding them. Nomos is preoccupied. The huge cogitator continues to sing its creaking song, running unknown calculations. Blessed be the spirit. A great path and great future lie before it, and we must assist it on its way. Okay, I'll take my leave. I'm going to assume that we're going to get points later for that. Or something similar. Or it's going to lead to something later. Similar to how Heinrichs had that one where it was like, we have taught him to be merciful. Potentially the lesson that we have taught Nomos will influence what Nomos does in the future. People are staring at this thing. What is it? The indicator lumens need to be replaced again. Can our shuttle pilots even land their craft without unnecessary damage, she says. The Almiri Spear, uh, showing positions of celestial bodies within the current system. Celestial bodies in the current system? Hmm. Wouldn't the current system be the one that has Footfall in it? Wait, we should go to Footfall. What a brilliant idea. I think we should do that. Right, visit. We are finally in the system. Now, is it going to let us reach Footfall, or is it going to give us something before we get there? Let's see. Ah, not quite. Lord Captain, we have received a Vox message from Footfall. The Inquisition has declared martial law on the station due to the threat of Malleus Extremis. Docking will require special permission, and even most of the asteroids have been cordoned off. The station's custodian, Her Ladyship Incendia Chorda, sends her greetings and invites Your Lordship to disembark at the docks with a small retinue. Excuse me. Excuse me a second, Vox Master. What do you mean the ship's custodian, her ladyship, Incendia Chorda? The footfall is my station. Hmm. No, 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 no. Burn forces will meet you there to escort to another chamber for a private audience. Vox crackles with static and Jai's honeyed voice fills the air. Vigdis, the salve of my heart. Forgive the intrusion, but I have important business with the rogue trader. Oh, Shireen, I simply wish to remind you about my numbskull crew who got themselves captured by some rival Ashmags. Ladame is too occupied for schemes, and besides, Incendia Chorda has already put him in his place, which leaves only Falco. May the Azai share his soul to pieces. Ah, footfall is straight ahead, and I would rather not waste the precious sand still left in the hourglasses of their lives. 
He threw a wrench into the works, making my trade network fall apart like a badly assembled chrono. No income, no profits, only damage. All because my right hand is chained up by on one of Footfall's asteroids. I bet we pay Falco a courtesy visit. I'm sure your imposing visage will loosen his tongue and maybe, just maybe, untie the hands of my crew. Okay, let's go and see what happened to your crew. Shireen, have I ever mentioned you're the most fragrant rosebush in the entire blossoming garden of the Corona's Expanse? If this is all you have to say, the Voxmaster unceremoniously boots Jai from the channel. Apologies, Lord Captain. What will be your instructions? What other options for landing on Fruitfall do we have? We have none, Lord Captain. The Augurs are reporting all the docking gates not watched by the Enforcers are locked and rigged with explosives. Very well. Let us take a look at Fruitfall's new hospitality. As you wish, Lord Captain. Okay. It's my station, though. I'd like to go to the atrium. Okay, I was hoping we would get a team. So, Jai has to come with us. Abelard is a must. Heinrichs is a must. Now we're now we're into questioning. Like Abelard is a must because he's kind of like he's our main authority, right? We bring him along to basically back us up on everything. Heinrichs has to come along because the station is currently run by the Inquisition. So this means that these two are pretty much a, they must come. Now we get into the questionable ones. Who's not coming with us? Erliet, Idira, and Marazai. I mean, it's, it, for obvious reasons. The station is run by the Inquisition. What are we doing here? So, they can't come with us. Which means we are down to four for two slots. Cassia, Argenta, Pascal, and Ulfar. I'll be honest with you. Story-wise, there's no reason to take Cassia anywhere right now. She has no story. Her... Um, story has been finished. At some point, I'm assuming she'll have a companion quest and things will advance, but currently there's no reason to bring her. Which leaves us with three. And I can create arguments for all three in my head. Ulfar sent to um, this system by the Inquisition. Ulfar will have some things to say to them. Bringing him along would be imposing as well. I could bring him. Pascal... There's a whole thing with the tech priests missing. That could be a thing. Argenta has a direct connection to um, Footfall via the Drusians. Though the only question would be, would, would, would she have any reason to bring her along except for us to try and get along with Incendia Chorda? I don't think so, no. In which case it has uh, Ulfar Pascal, right? I think Argenta could have something to say here. But I don't... I, the main thing I'm thinking is, like, maybe something of Lady Theodora's death. But, I don't think that we want to bring her along for that, if she has something to say, necessarily. I think she would have, like, if they're going to bring it up, they're going to make sure you don't miss it. And, we would rather not ha bring her to the Inquisition the same way that we are not bringing these three to the Inquisition. I mean, she would probably get away with it because she would just go, well, she was shooting a heretic. But she did also kill um, the other guy. So, yeah. I think this seems like a reasonable squad. I think we could choose better ones, but without extra knowledge, I can't possibly uh, work it out. So, let's go with those that group. I was trying to think, is the group... Yeah, the group is also different than the group we took it... Um, around uh, Komara. So that's good. We, we, we've changed up a little bit. Um, mainly just with one change of Heinrichs in, but you know, at least we got a slightly different group. And it's not the group that we took around most of the time, so party has changed slightly. But this is my being respectable party, I guess. Okay. Your, your eminent uh, lord... Okay, I missed that one. Your eminent lord captain awaits you in the square, your lordship. Okay. Have we been here before? Maybe. Oh, this is the atrium. I suppose we have been here before, right? Yes. Oh, right. It just spawns us in at the atrium. And there's that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Well, let's sort out our party first. Um, well, really, our party is looking more like this, right? Well, we also have another front line. Our party is looking more like this right now. Let's try and make it look reasonable. Something like that. Okay. Always keep your eye on the price. Right. Do a quick save. And then let's have a little chat to this guy. Salutary function functionality initiated. Glory to House von Valantius Trade Terminal Zeta 42 da slash slash 33 mu. Property of Adeptus Mechanicus Explorator Cognizance Fleet. Ready to process incoming requests. State your request. Glory to the Omnissiah. Who are you? Identification request accepted. Acceptable response found. Here in heat, this unit's identifier is Trade Terminal Zeta 42 slash slash 33 mu. Designated purpose procession trading and information requests and offers made to the Adeptus Mechanicus Explorator Cognizance Fleet. State your request. Glory to the Omnissiah. Where is Opticon uh, 22? Information request accepted. Acceptable response found. Here in heat, the unit Logis Opticon 22 was instructed to leave the location footfall and head for the strategic location Euphrates 2 in order to provide support to the Explorator Cognizance Fleet. After standard rites were performed on trade terminal Zeta 42 slash slash 33 Mu, it was deemed an adequate functional, functional replacement and received the blessing to process requests at the location footfall. State your request. Glory to the Omnissiah. Why do you keep saying glory to the Omnissiah? Information request declined. Acceptable response not found for following reasons. Heed and... Here and heat, request falls outside processing trade and information requests and offers functionality. Try restating your request. Without missing a beat, the tech priest adds confidently, Glory to the Omnissiah. How are you doing working under Incendia Chorda's rule? Information request accepted. Acceptable response found. Here and heat, the unit, rogue trader Incendia Bastal Chorda and the said unit's actions have no significant effect on the operation of this explorator cognizance fleet mission since the said unit has no jurisdiction over Adeptus Mechanicus or any assets thereof. Glory to the Omnissiah. I have data on planets that will be of interest to your owners. Information exchange request accepted. Acceptable response found here in heat. The information supplied has been deemed non-conformant or norm conformant and is accepted. This unit is grateful to House von Valancius for the cooperation. It will be rewarded in accordance with the mutual aid encouragement subroutine. Glory to the Omnissiah. And a make a deal I assume goes to the same thing. Build parse request where you're seeking the trading interface, yes. And it takes us to this thing. Alright, and we already know we don't really have that much for them. Okay. Quick save. Is that more goods? So this is a new area. If that's new goods over on the side. Okay. Uh, also, let me just check. So these aren't giving me who they are, but that's fine. I'm assuming that that's going to be maybe those people Rise up ahead. Rise to the top, or get left in the I'm dust. Well, to die, the bar patrons made their last stand right here. This man in front of you is scrutinizing a data slate. The insignia of the royal inquisit of the holy inquisition hangs from his chest. Not royal. Changing the entire structure of the. Um, Imperium. Uh, the burning, the wear of the scape is immune to burning. Yes, we already have that. So it's a new area, but it's got the same loot. Okay. Well, that's cool. I guess we'll pick it up again. Wonder if we can do the quest again in the corner. <laughs> That'd be nice. I always have a backup plan. Ooh. Well, Shireen, what do we have here? A cowardly Ashmag who wants to get his paws on my certificate without even working up a sweat. Considering this circumstance is currently affecting footfall, the only fitting place this filth could be hiding in is the sewers. Jai's nose wrinkles at the very thought. A nasty spot, with a powerful wither about it. 
That is true, but I swear to you, Shireen, you won't come up with a better trap for Falco. I know these tunnels like the back of my hand, and the most delicious part of it all is that that ash mag chose to go in there. He'll wish he hadn't. Of course, that's only if the ash eye doesn't mess things up for us and everything goes to plan, and if it doesn't... Jai breaks off, her shoulders sagging under the weight of her doubts. No, we do have a dogmatic one that we can't use right now. If it doesn't, my gang are dead, Shireen. One wrong move, one wrong word. Gah. Throne, damn that ash mag. Why is everything so difficult? Perhaps, perhaps I should just give him the merc atom tabula official. Falco's not a complete idiot. He wouldn't risk such a powerful payoff. He'll, he'll hold up his end of the deal and give me Thora and the others. Explain your plan in more detail. The gist of it is that we need to go down into the sewer tunnels of Footfall, connect a tank of sleeping gas to the old ventilation system, and direct the airflow to Falca's hideout. And of course, pray to the Exalted One that the Ashmag's jackals don't spot us. It's true, Shireen. It's going to be trickier than it seems. Falco is so desperate, he's bound to have his thugs patrolling the tunnels. If we go crashing around down there, he'll know something is afoot. And when Falco's feeling jumpy, Dai's nostrils flare from potent rage. It's roll. We're going to get a tank of sleeping gas. Dai stares at you, trying to decide if you're joking or being completely serious. What do you take me for? I've acquired it already. Don't worry, I have everything co covered. Alright, back into here. How are we going to direct the gas to the right place? We need to turn a few valves here and a couple there and start up the ventilation system from an old cogitator. May the exalted one preserve its machine spirit. How do we get in the tunnels? Most of the passages have been sealed off by Choda's hounds, but there is one they definitely haven't got to. Jai visibly perks up and winks at you. Them to pay a visit to Octi and the Adeptus Amasectus Shireen. Alright, come, it's time to enter the sewers. To the Amasectus we go, Shireen, or do you have other pressing business to handle on the way there? I do, yes. I, I have some very pressing business. Also, that person appears to um just be hanging out there. Alright, what have we got? Oh, two people hanging out. The sweet rotten odour and stench of... Or the scent of incense mix, in, mix into a thick... Um, Nagos, something. are you certain that this Nomus is not an abomination that requires immediate destruction? A creature from a cogitator that has taken over a mobile machine. It is only the absence of your approval that is stopping me from taking immediate action. <laughs> Don't even try it, Sherin. The cog loses his head at the mere sight of a new toy. All the Omnissiah's covenants and rules go right out the airlock, along with his usual caution. Oh, I didn't expect that to be a giant Heinrichs one, but it, you needed, I guess you need to have Pascal with you. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, a thick nauseating stench is what I was going to say had I got to it. Inquisition troops here. In, so they're blocking off different areas. Can I go through here? Keep your wits about oh. you. Whoa. Okay. I'm trying to read what it says on the front here, but. Yeah, this isn't good. Okay. Um, we got here Anver. That's what that says. Was this rats don't beg for mercy? I used to burn rats. Was he saying? Burn rats on the docks back in the station. Same thing. Hmm. Oh. Um. You think they wouldn't if they? You think I wouldn't if they begged me? They're vermin. Shut up and burn them. And to survive the trial, men survive that. When they grabbed on the street, I thought. That also says Anver. So they're all being killed because they're members of the Anver gang. Ruzi and Acolyte here. These are the same things. Heresy. So that they, no, so the same thing's written on the front of each of these, but they are different things when you read them. Okay. Uh, what's this? Stinking mass of charred, partially incinerated corpses smolders under the weight of fresh bodies. Uh, hello. Hieronymus's gaze is alight with awe. He breathes in the smell of burnt flesh and Prometheum and says to you, 
Behold, noble Malachi, as footfall transforms before your very eyes. In the wake of your toils, this den of depravity will once again become a testament to the Emperor's greatness, as it was its original design. Does it bring you delight? So I can lose the diary of the Wasteland Wafer? Your expedition perished. He studies the diary for a while in silence and says grimly, Captain Verkel was a kind but fallible man. So was my brother in service, Gravik. So were the 4,822 pilgrims who boarded the Wasteland Wayfarer many years ago. It grieves me to think that their kindness failed the test that the Void presented them with. Let their deaths serve as a reminder to us. Corruption has many faces and can stain even the purest of souls. Thank you for the news, Lord Captain. Colony A3649 Minoris is hereby officially declared fallen and lost. I must take my leave. Okay. I'll be handed off the book, which is fine. Um... You got anything else here? Is there Amber. money to be made? Piracy. Heresy. Piracy. I'm just seeing what pe what isn't allowed here. I think it would be useful for us to know. Descent. Keep your eye on the uh, okay. Blasphemy. Descent is an interesting one. So, this person was, well, yeah, this person was crucified for uh, dissenting. Rise to the top, okay. or get left in Violating the Violating curfew gets you in front of the firing squad. Um, okay, things are not going well here. Or blasphemy, or heresy, or piracy, or anvers. Vagabonds and citizens are back have here a now. Plan. Oh, hello. Have mercy, our families are starving. We have only taken a couple of Nutra bars. Lies, I see clearly with my naked eye. The corruption that has engulfed your nature, only the cleansing fire can absolve you now. Guilty. Oh, okay. Oh. oh, I see. Is this fire cleansing enough for you, crazy hag? The Emperor protects me. Guilty. Burn him. All right. No. Hello. Incindia Chorda is absorbed in reading a long strip of parchment. Her left hand is holding a silver spoon, with which she is carefully scooping up brain matter from the open skull of the man contorted next to her. Malachi von Valancius, I have been informed of your arrival. Exhaustion is crisscrossed in Cindy's features with lines. Her cheek is twisted in a continuous nervous tick, yet her eyes are ablaze with indomitable resolve. A brilliant aura of power and righteous fury surrounds her like a mantle. She gracefully brings a gold-plated inhaler to her lips, takes a deep breath, and the fire in her gaze flares like a plasma thruster. One look at Incendia's full dress uniform shows that it has not been changed in many days. The collar is greasy and the laces are stained with sweat. The air is tinged with the smell of an inhaled stimulant that is used to give serfs the ability to work multiple watches without rest. Hmm. What is that? I'm going to point to the man of the open skull. Incendia sinks her silver spoon into the man's brain and slowly consumes this revolting morsel. I must know the taste of a criminal's thoughts. It is how I learn to recognize their patterns. Okay. Well, I think we immediately set the tone. Finish the man, this entertainment of yours reeks of corruption. Incendia does not bat an eye at the man's death. A laughable accusation. Do you think yourself capable of detecting corruption? Something sparks in her pale eyes. You know, not you know, not the first thing about perceiving it, sensing it, peering into people's souls and seeing the heinousness therein. 
You do not know what it's like to look in their faces and see the brand of their impious deeds, but I know it all too well, and none will escape my wrath. I have encountered sanctioned death cults that practice cannibalism as part of their way of praising the Emperor, a surprisingly large number of them harbored heresy within. You have suspicions about me? Well, it is your duty to suspect, but do your eyes see a trespass here? No, I have committed no malefactum against him. What manner of slaughterhouse is this? Some atrocious travesty of justice. Incendia jerks her chin up and responds haughtily. This is true justice. Pre... Unprejudices. Unprejudiced. Inescapable and equally merciless to all. The Lord Inquisitor has bestowed upon me the honour of bringing order to this cesspool of pirates and heretics, to rid Footfall of the corruption that has fettered its limbs and turned this Imperial Station into a hotbed of free thinking and inefficiency. I will not rest until all have been judged. Incendia studies you with a predatory smile. It must have been the Emperor's providence that brought you here to my court. It would be my pleasure to indict you for the crimes you have committed. Um. Well, let's see what we're gonna say. Uh. Ooh, we have a couple of different options. So, what is it you wish to judge me for? Go ahead. This should be interesting. I've broken out after being held captive by Xenos and Komarag and butchering my way through scores of enemies of humanity. Tell me, am I truly the greatest enemy of the Imperium that you've been able to find? I'm ready to defend my honor before this court. Whom should I kill to put an end to this farce? Would you look at that, Heinrichs? I've been an enemy of humanity all along here to comment, or to the nine devils with you arrogant halfwit. You have no right to judge me. Um, I think I'm going to say to Heinrichs, would you look at that, Heinrichs? I've been an enemy of humanity all along. Care to comment? After clearing his throat and presenting his interrogator's regalia, Heinrichs pronounces imperatively, On behalf of the Coronas Conclave, I hereby inform Rogue Trader House Chorda that, by order of Lord Inquisitor Calcazar, Rogue Trader Von Valancius has been placed in the custody of the Inquisition. Any attack on his safety is to be treated as an act of interference in the affairs of the Inquisition. Excuse me, I'm in custody? The warrior clad in armor adorned with the sign of the Inquisition speaks in a voice that is even and dry like paper. The Lord Inquisitor is aware of the rogue trader von Valancius' arrival on Footfall. He allowed it and gave no order of persecution. Rather, the Lord Inquisitor's will is that the rogue trader von Valancius be treated with respect befitting his high status. In her assertions, Lady Chorda is getting dangerously close to abusing her authority and violating the chain of command. This is your warning. Incendia's pale cheek is hit by a spasm. Her lip curls... Uh, her lips curl as she mutters. I have no intention of questioning the Lord Inquisitor's orders. Perhaps he wishes to receive you in one piece so he may conduct a personal interrogation. Um, those of you who acknowledge me as your sovereign are viewed by the laws subjects of House von Valancius and therefore exempt from Chorda's judgement, I will take you aboard my ship. I definitely will, but let's start with this. So you are in charge of Footfall now? Indeed I am. When the Lord Inquisitor enacted martial law in the Expanse, I offered him my support at once. Footfall was chosen as the Lord Inquisitor's headquarters and the position of Footfall's liege was temporarily abolished while this war lasts. Or perhaps longer than that. All authority was transferred to the station's warden, to me. While the Lord Inquisitor is preoccupied with matters of strategic planning, I am tasked with security and order. And there is much to do on that front. Pirates and smugglers, apostates and cold traders, deserters and outlaws, every one of them warrants attention. Cracking her neck, stiff from many hours of reading documents, Insidia again scoops up the brain from the open skull of the poor fellow standing next to her for silver spoon. No, she doesn't. His fellow is dead unless she's doing it from... Unless he's dead while she, he's doing it. Anyway. Everywhere you look, servants are buckling under heavy stacks of new uh, denouncements, warrants, and other documents. Um, whom do you judge? 
All of them thieves, smugglers, pirates, traitors, heretics, deserters, abettors, harborers, cowards, and, preju and perjurers. And any who has ever trespassed, any who has ever protected a miscreant or kept quiet about a crime they knew of, all will be condemned. With obsessive determination, Incendia starts going through her papers, seemingly no longer aware that she is doing so. More and more new convicts are being granted the great boon of undergoing the servitude in peer Pitius and having rid themselves of sinful consciousness of serving the Imperium free of doubt and weakness. Footfall will once again become a bastion of law and righteousness. I will eradicate all heresy that prevents the faithless from giving themselves over to the good of toiling in his name. Hmm. How long has your court been in session already? Incendia seems slightly perplexed by your question. She starts moving signed sentences from one stack to another, then says uncertainly, Three weeks? The court carried on day and night, so my sense of time eludes me. Hmm. There is nothing just about this trial. Your accusations are contrived, and their purpose is simply to turn the entire population of Footfall into pliant automatons. Do you think I find enjoyment in this? Looking at vileness upon vileness, listening to one excuse after another. I loathe this and despise every malefactor out there. If I were weak of will, I would have obliterated this foul station of nuclear fire. Instead, I am here to offer each of them the right to be judged in his name, and the chance to return to his fold renewed. The universe is a terrifying place. We are surrounded by the arch enemies machinations and xeno scum who would deny us our right to exist the threat is inconceivable and human weakness will not help us divert it if man is weak i will rid him of a spinelessness and feebleness endowing him with a sacred narrowness of mind and eradicating all that prevents him from utilizing his full his whole self in the service of the imperium she is not lying you can tell by her eyes and her voice trembling with earnest faith that incendia genuinely believes every word she just said. What makes you think you're entitled to govern this place as you see fit? Such is the law of footfall. Any rogue trader who arrives here assumes the right of absolute authority. Surely it is not that cutthroat Tokara who deserves to rule this station. He will soon be hanging from a noose, and so will his cast balakin henchmen, and so will those Anver firebrands whose outrageous activities brought footfall so much grief. She looks at you with a gloating smirk. Once you hindered my efforts to subdue this station. Okay, yeah, we granted it our patronage, so they have acknowledged that. And yet, here I am now, dispensing justice to the wicked. I only regret I was unable to get started sooner. Then Tokara's troublemakers would have already been crushed instead of lurking in cargo bays and maintenance tunnels. Regardless, I will deal with them soon enough. I'll point at the uh, assassin's corpse. I can tell you're quite popular with the locals. This attempt was mediocre and far from the first, but my enforcers on my throne keep me safe. Incendia pats an armrest and smiles. Its refactor field is impervious to even tank shells. That thief took Kara has had um, had this sacred Drusian relic stashed in one of his storerooms. Where's the Lord Inquisitor? In the liege's chambers coordinating with the Expanse's defense, his attention is focused on matters of vital importance, and he is not seeing any supplicants. The soldier wearing inquisitorial armor echoes Incendia's words. Your lordship cannot see the Lord Inquisitor now. Wherever he bade to inform your lordship, he will summon you later when the circumstances permit him to do so. As you'll see whether Fruitfall will thank the Emperor for your reign. In due time, I will weed out all the taint that all, all the taint that is bred here on Footfall for so long. Then the pious fear, loyalty, and devotion will once again be the pillars of the station under his watchful eye. What happened between you and Winterscale? Winterscale is a traitor. While the Expanse burns, ravaged by heretics and unhallowed Xenos, he has abandoned his duty completely and had the nerve to ignore the Lord Inquisitor's call to battle. My servants are taking over his worlds and ships, while he is hiding from reckoning and indulging his base urges. Soon enough, he too will stand before judgment. Hmm. Okay. I don't think we're going to commit to joining him, as much as she is annoying me. 
I don't think that we're going to commit to joining her. I think two has to be our option. I don't think I'm going to say four. It does concern me, but... Have you and Caligos lost your minds? The Expanse is in a calamitous state, and you two are busy settling scores. You must cease this at once. Negotiating with that mad dog is off the table now. He will merely laugh at your talks of reconciliation and execute your envoys. For too long has Caligos re reveled in impunity and believed himself king of his world. Well, I'm not going to draw my weapon. I'm going to do the uh, Iconoclast action. Those of you who acknowledge me as your sovereign are viewed by the law as subjects of House von Valantius and therefore exempt from Chorda's judgment. I will take you aboard my ship. The hopeful crowd in the atrium starts hysterically clamoring their oaths of fealty to House von Valantius. Not one of them thinks twice about clutching at the life-saving straw you have offered them. And now it's much quieter. Incendia wearily leans on an armrest and looks at you with contempt. Take this pitiful gaggle of miscreants, Malachi, if you so desire. My trial will not end here. I have the whole of footfall to judge. Hmm. I don't think we can push her off a of footfall. I don't think it's going to work. Enough words, your accused wait, await, and so do my duties. We acquired one people of 0% here, apparently. Okay. Wait, you have a duty to the Emperor that you must see to. Vladim Tokara, the deplorable rebel who once ruled the station, has slipped away from me. He is instigating the people to revolt, killing my servants and hiding from my wrath with the dexterity of a void rat. My informers claim he is he often appears in the den of unrest that bears the irreverent name uh, of the Adeptus Amasecus. We have made several attempts to arrest him, yet he evaded capture each time. Reverend Hieronymus has gone there to convince him to surrender quietly, but his efforts have likewise been unsuccessful. In the interest of Footfall's integrity, Tokara must be apprehended. As the rogue trader in authority, I order you to aid me in bringing him to justice. The asteroid where the Adeptus Amasekis is located has been cordoned off, but my enforcer will take you there. I want you to lure Tokara out of his hole and seize him so that he may stand trial. Do this for the sake of Footfall's liberation and pave the way that my or the road that my justice will tread. What makes you think I'll do that? You pronounce Vladame a criminal? Why wouldn't I? That Valrog's infamy is known to all. He patronized thieves, smugglers, and pirates. By his allowance, heresies and unholy cults flourished. That he has evaded punishments this long can only be described as gross negligence, which I intend to rectify before long. Why did Hieronymus go to the Adept Adeptus um, Amasekus? Adeptus Amasekus. Reverend Hieronymus headed uh, where the rebels are seen the most often, so he could preach to them and sway them to repent. Alas, he still cannot see the difference between those who have erred and those who are beyond any hope of redemption. And what do I stand to gain? Does it not satisfy you that order and imperial compliance will be restored in Footfall? I see you adopted too much from Theodora, namely her hubris, greed, and indifference to duty. I'm going to lie and say I'll drag Vladim before this court. Your cooperation will be taken into account, Malachi. But remember, and Zindia's eyes flash manically, none of the rebel leaders are allowed to die before their trial. I forbid you to execute them without my leave. Okay. Well, we definitely cleared out this place of everybody else who was in here. Got any goods here? We may have goods for us I to always see. always keep my options open. Let's head back this way. So we know that nobody is uh, being let in to see the Inquisitor, but we, that's fine. All right, we can't head past here. Nope, that's blocked off. Okay. Um, assume there's nothing up here that we can grab. That's fine. Can I check with Hieronymus? Nope, that's fine. We don't choose that option because he gets made? mad at us. We're saying, can we move this somewhere else? It's one that's been there a while. Oh, good. There we go. Grab that. Do a little tech use. Thank you. Always keep your eye on the prize. But can I head, head in this way? Ooh, I can what head into the body that? here. I don't like that you're sniffing it. Uh, let's have a little chat. 
Soldier was killed with a sudden blow at point blank range quickly and quietly. Keep your wits about you. Okay. You saw a check along here. Traces of suit. There. A bomb exploded here. Most likely an improvised one. You speak to these people? No. Okay. We're just finding out that things have happened, basically. That's all we're doing here. Cargo's been impounded from those guys. Another person who's dead. In tortured human remains are smoldering on the top of a pile of books on architecture. The sign says, Gorde Skatov, a spy for the Xenos, took notes of the station structure for sabotage purposes. I no! Plan. The guy who just liked seeing how things were. He's dead. Well, that is not good. Okay. And I bet I can't just walk in the front. Have we got Mistress Udari, I've been meaning to ask you. Are your people still working with the tutors? By the exalted one, Master Van Kalix. Even cold traders have standards. And mine do not permit me to have dealings with the tutors now that I know what they specialize in. Oh, okay. Judged by their injuries, the aristocrats were subjected to a long hearty beating before their execution. Yeah. Okay, and I bet that we can't Rise just walk to the in. Top, or get yeah, it's left currently in the close dust. to other people. Then we're going to check this side. I did see some goods that we can grab. Wonderful. Okay. So. Oh, and, and loot. Don't forget the loot. Hello, Incendia. I'm just here to grab the loot. If that's okay. Uh, I don't need the axe and don't need the plasma gun. Um, also, what can I grab you? No, I'll get them on the way out. Um, yeah, that knife that we got previously, I, I was going to give it to somebody. Open. I was going to give it to uh, Marazai. Yeah, uh, when we can. Because uh, getting an extra free attack for him is insane. But, you know, we need to actually uh, have Marazai in the party to do that right this second. So we're not going to do that uh, until we go back out. So I need to remember it. Anyway, quick save. And, wow, that's actually the episode over. I, went, I was looking, I was like... Oh, about 20 minutes left or something. No, we're, we're over time. Okay, well, given that we've got two things to do in the next place, I guess we're going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.